Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Down with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. I am your host, Nina AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi, my great children of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, friend, friend of little children. We want to welcome all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are welcome, precious ones at home too. We love all of you. We have been blessed. With, um, we have been blessed today, and I'm so glad that you are here this afternoon watching us. We are here to learn, not only to watch me, Antonina, not to only watch those on the screen. Are you here to learn the word of God? You are here to flip the Bible. You are here to write down some scriptures and also to share with your friends. So precious ones, I want you to stay put. In the month of November, I know a lot of you know what happens in November. Very soon, right? There will be a big party in your house, right? And there is a specific bed that suffers a lot. The turkey, yes, Thanksgiving. Americans, we celebrate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up very soon. But in the month of November, we that are in the Lord, COP, um, church, uh, COP USA, we also celebrate Thanksgiving. But we don't wait till specific date to celebrate Thanksgiving. Every day is a Thanksgiving for us. Every day, we children, C-O-P-U-S-A, we always show an attitude of gratitude to the Lord, to our friends, to our family, to our teachers, to anyone we meet, our enemies. Anytime somebody does something for you, we say thank you. And precious ones, we are going to flip the Bible this afternoon, and we are going to learn, we are going to go through the scriptures and learn and get to a point that we realize that whatever we give out to the church, to a friend, to anyone, it is God that has given unto us. Therefore, we also have to give it out. But before we dig deeper into our lesson, I want us to open our Bibles. We are going to go ahead and uh, we'll learn our memory verse. But before we do that, I will let the precious ones here introduce themselves and then we will go and then learn our memory verse for the week. So we will start with the first person. Hi, my name is Darren Afori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Afori from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Janelle Piaminka from Dallas District. Hello, my name is Shawnee Piaminka and I am also from Dallas District. Hello, my name is Esther Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hello, my name is Joel Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hello, my name is Benedict Gimbal from Cincinnati District. Hello, everybody. My name is James Ose. I'm from PWC, New York District. Hi, my name is Inshira, and I'm from Oakland District. You are all welcome, precious ones. You are all welcome. So we'll go ahead and we are going to learn our memory verse for the week. I'm going to learn our memory verse for the week. And our memory verse for the week will be taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 13. And I read, now our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Amen. 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 So first Corinthians, uh, first chronic, excuse me, first chronicles chapter 29, verse 13. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Amen. So here we can even see that what there is thanks, there's a word here, um, thanks. We see praise, and we also see what? Glorious name, glorious name. Precious ones, we want you to learn your memory verse, practice it, and share with a friend, and share your memory verse with a friend. We will also go ahead and then pretty much go over our lesson for today. We'll go ahead 
and do our lesson for today. But before we go deeper, I will let Esther, Esther Morgan will read for us. She is going to read for us. And our scripture reading for today is First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to 20. Esther, can you read for us, please? First Chronicles 29, verse 1 through 20. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great, because this palatial structure is not for men, but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God, gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as oinks for the settings, turquoise stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stones and marble. All of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. 3,000 talents of gold, gold of Ophir, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the building. For the gold work and the silver work and all and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now who, who is willing to cons consecrate themselves to the Lord today? Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They gave toward the work on, of the temple of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze and 100,000 talents of iron. Anyone who had precious stones gave to the, them to the treasury of the temple of the Lord. In the custody of Jehiel, the Greshonite, the people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. David's prayer. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty of splendor. For everything in earth, heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all wealth, and honor came from you. You are the Lord, the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as we as we are all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building your temple, for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts, in the hearts of your people forever, and keep their hearts loyal to you. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands statuses and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. Then David said to the whole assembly, praise the Lord your God. So they all praised the Lord, the God of the fathers. They bowed down, 
prostrating themselves before the Lord, the Lord and the King. Amen. 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 Beautiful reading, Esther. God richly bless you. Our topic for this afternoon is a thankful heart willingly gives. A thankful heart willingly gives. This lesson teaches the generosity and the willingness of David. The focus of this lesson is on how God owns all that we have. And we show him our gratitude by giving it what? Giving it willingly and generously. Sometimes when we hear give, we automatically think of, we, we think of money. That is not the only way we can willingly give to help others. And as we go through our lesson, I want you to think about what are some, some other ways that we kids or kids of our age can also give willingly. If you don't mind, do anybody want to share with us what among your sub, your age group, what are some of the things that you guys can also give willingly to others? Yes. Benedict. Well, some ways we as kids can really give willingly to others is by volunteering and choosing to help other people out in any giving or money to it. Like I see volunteering as a good thing because one volunteering really gets you into the work habit, makes you feel like free. Like once you volunteer you go help somebody, it's not gonna feel like your heart, like you put like so much weight down. Because the, the energy and the time to spend to use volunteering was all for God. And also, it's also another beneficial because now they can give you a paper which can actually help with scholarship and all that stuff. So volunteering is one good way to um, help others. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yes, um, Ishira, and then we come to Sarah. Um, Esther. I'm going to tell you a time of when I gave willingly. One time when I had a, my friend and we had a math paper and we cut, we cut the little cards out because we didn't need it. And she, she threw hers away by accident. So she asked me if, I could, if she could have one and I gave it to her willingly. She gave it to her willingly. Her friend didn't force her to give it out. She gave it to her. God bless you for giving willingly. Yes, who want to share with us too? Esther and then Joel. You know, your hand too was up. So um, let's yeah. start with Esther and then we we'll go to Joel. So uh, if I had to give willingly, I would... Um, like be caring, like, um, and also like uh, provide for them and give them what they need when they need it. God bless you. Yes, Joel. Um, I will give them like supplies that they need, like clothes, food, water. And then I'll also give them a Bible so they can learn about God. You give them a Bible that, yeah, so with the clothes, let me come back to you again. Okay. You are, the clothes. Are you gonna give them clothes you don't want? You don't you don't need or don't fit me. Or don't fit you. So you donating some of your clothes because your friend or somebody you want to give it to do not have much. God richly bless you. That's a great contribution. Esther, God bless you too. Yes, um Janelle. Um, like to give willingly, it's like like you don't have to get something before you give to someone else like helping out around the house before your parents ask you to and like helping um like clean dishes or do some of that before Fantastic. i love that piece that you just said cleaning the dishes mommy didn't tell you you did it yourself right 
Exactly. Willingly doing it. Nobody has to force you to do it. You do it because what? You feel like doing it, right? God richly bless you. Yes, who else? Sean, you're upside down. You're on the other side. Of you. Want to turn your screen? Good. Who else? Yes, Esther. Uh, I remember another time at school when, like, before, like, um, like before, um, we couldn't really share stuff because of COVID. But like near like this year, um, we kind of could unless we sanitized it first. And my friend, we were doing this trivia, um, for math, and she couldn't find her marker, and I had an extra one, and I gave it to her living room sharing giving willingly esther god bless you for sharing with us so precious was as we prepare to celebrate thanksgiving pray for ways you can show your thank thankfulness right your thankfulness to god for all that he has blessed you with right by giving to what by giving to others too do you understand we are, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we are going to pray to God for the ways, for ways you can want, you can show your thankfulness to God. You are showing your thankfulness to God for all he has blessed you with by giving it to what? By giving it to others willingly and generously. This reminds me of this song. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your, your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one, one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. If you, if you listen to the way, say they count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done for you. Sometimes we focus on things that we have asked God and we have not received. That is the ones we focus all our attention on and forget that there are so many things that surround us that God has blessed us with. As we go through the month of November, and whilst we are in the Thanksgiving mood, my prayer to every child is that we will ask God to show us all the blessings, because sometimes we forget to see them. So God should open our eyes to see them, so that as we have the attitude of what? Gratitude and say thank you to God, we will also give willingly to bless other kids. Even though David could not build God's temple, God did give him a plan for the temple. When you read 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 11 to the 19th, we will call them what the blueprint. It's like you have a master plan, you are going to build a house, or uh, you're going to put up a structure, you have to put it in a, a, a blueprint form, how it will look like on a paper before what you actually start the building. But God came in and told David, David, you will not be the one to build the temple. Actually, it's going to be your son, Solomon. It will be Solomon that will be building the temple. And as I said earlier, I am sure David did not really fight God. Maybe he didn't understand. But we, we, don't, we don't question God. When God says this is what he will do, he will do it, right? So here, God appointed Solomon to be the one to build the temple. But David didn't give up. He didn't get upset. He didn't say that, okay, God, because you are not letting me do it, hmm, you know what, God? I'm not even going to contribute at all. I'm not even going to do this. I don't want to be part of this, as we normally do as precious ones, right? But here, David didn't do that. David said, even if I don't get the chance, if I'm not going to get opportunity to build the temple, I'm still going to give all that God, all my worth that God has given me. I'm going to give it back. I'm going to put it into the temple. And the temple was God's house. If it's 
in, in, in today's or in our, in our modern time now, we will say what? The church, right? Is the church. So Solomon was going to build the church. Whatever the God has given Solomon, David, David says, I'm going to give it all to my son for them to, uh, to use to build God's house. And it wasn't only David. The Israelite, the people also contributed. They didn't give things they didn't like. They gave things that they cherished and they valued the most. Why did they do that? They did that because they know, as Esther read, that what? They believe that it is God that had given to them. So they have to give it back. Precious ones, what are some of the things that you think God has given to you that you can use in his house? That you can use to bless other people? Precious ones, I will come to you and I will open the floor. And then, yes, James. Okay, we can go to James and go to Bennett if you want to share. And then we'll continue with the story. So I want to say that God gave you life so you could use like your life to impact and help people. Like there are people who are just dedicated their lives to like traveling around the world, spreading the gospel, or people becoming like work people who like are worship artists, like they do worship songs. Like even you, you could sing songs like of worship to like thank God about like him creating you. Like when you wake up. My mom always tells me that when you wake up, the first thing you have to do is pray. And then sometimes if I forget that I'm going to have to do like an hours long worth of devotion just because I couldn't, I forgot to like, you know, remember to praise and thank God. So we always have to be thankful and we can give our lives and dedicate our lives as thanks to God. We can, amen. God bless you, James. Great contribution. We can dedicate our lives, our lives. Some kids go to church, they don't clap. When, even when it's praise time, they won't clap their hands. They won't sing the song. They won't move their bodies. The Bible is telling us to use our what? Our life. We should use our whole being to thank him. We should dance unto him. We should use our hands. We should clap and say, Hallowed be unto the name of the Lord. Yes, Benedict. wrong button um i just wanted to say that um one way we can give is using our education and our laws to help better other people like how i say this is see this is there's some young kids in the church who are just entering the church who like this pace and stuff they're new they're just walking around you can like help them like go to the like once you have your free time, you can go to the little kids section and go and like teach them more and elaborate on what the teacher taught them. Because God actually told, like, be like Jesus. Like, I always say, be like Jesus and fall on the steps. What Jesus did, you have to do it too. Education is one thing Jesus is really focused on. What we got to do is help and teach the younger ones so they'll grow up in the right way. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, Benedict. David gave his own gold, silver, bronze, iron, and wood for the materials needed to build God's temple. He also gave jewels and colorful stones that will, that will be part of the, I'm just imagining the temple, how beautiful that will be. He gave fine stones and marbles in large quantities all to build the house of the Lord. David gave all these willingly because of his love for Christ, because of his love for God. David was thankful for all of the blessings God has given him. David was not thankful for some of his blessings. The Bible says that David was thankful for all of the blessings God had given him. David also gave willingly from his personal treasures to help build God's temple. Precious ones, what does it mean to say or to say um, to give willingly? When we say to give willingly, what does that mean? 
What does it mean? Yes, um, Ishra. It means like if you have a toy and your friend doesn't have a toy, you really want to give the toy to your friend and play together. Fantastic. God bless you. Can you think of a time when you give willingly? Can you think of um, a time you gave because you were told to, but you really didn't want to? Yes. Who hasn't spoken? Joel. Joel is on fire today. Yes, Joel. Um, what it means to give willingly is like giving stuff like that um what your heart desires to give. Um, like when you want to give like a toy to a person, like a child in need, or if you want to donate to a mm -hmm. hospital so they can do their research, you're giving it from your heart, not to like for public attention, like how some of the rich people do it. And and it like means a lot for other people that you give it to because then they're very grateful and, and they feel very blessed to have it. Thank you. Thank you. God You're bless welcome. you. Well, yes, Esther. Uh, so it's like when you decide in your heart to give willingly and like you're happy about it and enthusiastic about it and like you're not like like doing it for fame or like like you just want to do it because other people are doing it for some reason. So you're doing it not because somebody has forced you to. You're not doing good to somebody because you were told to do it and you didn't want to do it. But it's like mommy say, oh, give. Can you can you share the cookie with 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 miracle? And James will be like, no, but it's too small. I don't want to do that. But miracle wants that cookie, right? And James is like, no, it's too small. I'm not sharing it. Mommy said, can you do it now? Now the tone changes, right? So James breaks it and give half to miracle. James didn't want to give willingly. That act of giving is not coming from James' heart, right? Because he was forced to do it. He didn't want to. But when you give willingly, the motive behind what you are doing. David gave all his riches to God. Why? Oh, it's all because of his love for God. He did what he did because what he knows it was God that gave it to him. So he giving it back to God. He hasn't lost anything, right? Right? Ishra, your hand is up. You want to contribute? Um, I was going to say that um, a time that when I gave give one and leave, but I didn't really want to is when I, I had cousins come over. They're just coming over for a little bit. And um, we had our tacos because we didn't get to eat them. But um, I, I had two and my little sister had two and I didn't really want to share because I wanted my tacos. But then my mom said that I have to um, share with them, but I didn't really want to. So I did. So you did. God bless you for sharing with us. God richly bless you for sharing with us. What is your attitude towards the things we, you have? Please, these questions that I'm, I'm going to ask, I want, if it's four people, I want everybody to answer, try and answer a piece of it. What is your attitude towards the things that you have? Are you willing to give anything you have to help God's work? Do we follow David's example by being thankful for all that God has given to us? So there are three questions here and I, I will repeat them. What is your attitude towards the things that you have? The things that you have, what is your attitude towards them? Are you willing to give anything you have to help God's work? And the third one, do we follow David's example by being thankful for all that God has given us? 
Who want to try first? Yes, Declan has not spoken. Let's start with Declan and go to James and then Esther. Um, I personally like the like the things I have, but then if they were to be taken away, I'll not be that happy. But then I'll be willing to give them to God because either way it's a win-win. Because if I give it to God, God will put it in multiple folds. So and then now yes, we do follow David's example. Because when he had, David was grateful even if tough tough times. So we should be grateful in tough times, just like David. So as a precious one, what will be your tough time? Hmm. What will be your tough time for you to show gratitude? Can you relate to that? Can somebody else relate to it? Okay, I will let James go. James, you can go with your question. Okay, your question. so I was going to answer your the two questions sure. you had. Okay, um, you can go ahead. So I pretty much have a good attitude with the stuff that I have. Yeah, I'm really thankful that I have, like, if I wanted something for, like, a couple of years and my parents finally bought it, like, I'd be very excited, and then I would keep it, like, very well. Like, my parents once gave me, like, a, a drone, and I kept it so well. Like, I was always polishing it, even though I didn't need anything. So, I, I like, when you're a kid and you get what you want, you have a pretty good attitude towards it. And I also wanted to say, um, while we're still on the subject of Thanksgiving, that, like, how David was so thankful to God for everything that he had. We also have to be thankful for all the blessings and stuff that we have in our lives because, you know, the fact that you're alive, you're able to... A lot of the funny things, people are complaining that, oh, this person has this kind of car and this person has this kind of house. But at least you're alive to see that person's house and car. Someone, they don't have, they don't have the mouth to be complaining because they're not even here. They're gone. So you have to be really thankful about everything that God has done for you in your life. Amen. Amen. Great contribution, James. God bless you. Yes, Esther. Oh, so I wanted to say that I so for the attitude part, um, I have a pretty good attitude to the things that I have. Um, so I try to use them as much as I can and like um maybe give turns to my siblings if um I can and like anybody else that would like a turn. And if like if it's like been like a very long time and I've outgrown it and I don't have any much use for it. Um, I actually try to give them away or probably give it to one of my siblings. God bless you for sharing with that, Esther. God bless you. We'll learn from you. Yes, Joel. Do you um, share too? Yes. <laughs> okay. um, not often. Ah. <laughs> like if I'm like really attached to it and I like really want it, right? And um, I just got it. Maybe I don't really want to share it. Unless if it's shareable, then yeah, I can share it every once in a while. But if I outgrown it, I'll give it to my younger sister. And then I was like, oh, you can you can play with it. I don't really need it anymore. And we all know that, like, even as Christians, we're all humans. And we have been ungrateful, young and old, at, like, some point in time. But, but um, we all know that we have to be grateful for God letting us live another day and going to church. And, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Great contribution. God bless you. Yes, Benedict. Benedict Hunt was up. Janelle, are you raising your hands? Because I don't see your hands. I only see your face. So when you raise your hands, I may not see it. Uh-huh. Now I see your hands up. Or sometimes you may have to communicate that in the chat, okay? Okay. So after Benedict, you can come in, okay? And then that one. Down. Uh, I want to relate to Jay, um, James added to the gratitude when he was talking about um, all that stuff. Like sometimes, like you don't have to be that one person who, like, okay, you didn't give me this, so uh, no. Sometimes you have to be one to give, like. How many times do you hear people say, man, this Wi-Fi is amazing? No, it was never. It was like, man, T-Mobile sucks and Sprint is garbage, so 
really try spectrum. Like, it's all the faulty things. Like, sometimes you gotta be grateful. Like, some kids that are super rich, you always go, like, now a friend is really rich and he's wearing Gucci and all that stuff. And then you go to his dad's house for Christmas, and, like, and you get some pink Gucci and you're like, I don't want pink Gucci. You look like a lingo, bro. I wanted these red ones. They look so cool. I'm like, man, this is the worst Christmas ever. Like, sometimes you gotta be grateful that, man, I have these weird designer clothes and I have this, and I'm still living. I'm breathing air. So you still have to be grateful for that. Amen. We have to be grateful. God bless you, Benedict. Designer clothes or no designer clothes. When we go to heaven, there's no designer clothes there. So far as you have clothes worried, thank God for that. You don't have to wait till you are wearing Gucci. What do you need the Gucci for as a kid? Before you say thank you to God? No. So far as you are well clothed and you are happy, thank you, God. Just say thank you to Jesus. Let us learn to have the attitude of gratitude at all times. God richly bless you. Yes, Janelle. Okay, so my answer on the gratitude question was like, um, like when you're a kid and you get something that you want over a long time, like you're on cloud nine and you really like what you have, but when someone asks for it, you don't want to give it up because you like just got it. But after a while, once you have it and you have no use for it anymore, I would give it to one of my siblings or donate it. God bless you. God bless you. So what did David want to do for God? What did David, what did he want to do for God? Declan, I'll come to you, okay? I haven't forgo uh, forgotten. Declan. Yes. Okay, Declan, what did David wanted to do for God? David really wanted to build a temple because after he got his temple in Jerusalem, he was sitting down and this is what he really says. I am enjoying my life in the temple while God is living in a tent. He So he wanted to create a palace. At first, this one Nathan said, do whatever you want because God is with you. But then the night before that, the night after that, sorry, God told Nathan, no, he won't be the one to build a temple, rather his son Solomon. So David really wanted to build a temple. I think what he figured was that if I can't build a temple, I might as well make sure that everything I have will go into the temple since I, I wanted to build a temple, but I couldn't. Is that what you were thinking? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a good one. God richly bless you. God bless you. Who was going to be the one to build a temple? Yes, Nyami, uh, Isha, who was going to build a temple for God? Solomon. Solomon. Solomon was going to be the one to be to build God's temple. How lucky he is. Who gave David the plan? Who gave David the plans for the temple? Who did? Who? Who gave the plan? The master plan. The blueprint. Is somebody's hands up? Because I don't see anybody's hands up. Who gave it? I'm looking for somebody who doesn't have their hands up. Who gave it? Yes, Janelle. Uh, you're muted. Janelle, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, did... Who did... gave David the plan for the temple? God. God did. It was God. Precious ones, whatever, I know that question was tricky, right? You see, it is God that gives us wisdom. Whatever we put on paper, it is God that has given them to you. That is why the Bible says that we always advise that as a child, you need to use your eyes to watch what is right, right? Use your ears to listen to the right thing. Right, because what you feed your ears and your eyes and your mouth with, 
that's the result that will come out of you, right? So here, if you read the scripture and you, you get close and have a special relationship with God, God will speak to you. God will communicate with you. And here in this story, it is God that gave the step-by-step, -step, the blueprint. It is God that gave it to David. And David thought he was going to be the one to build it. But God said, oops, I'm sorry. This time it's not going to be you. It is going to be your son, Solomon. What do you think? Do you think he was upset, sad? What do you think? Let's just think aloud. What do you think? Benedict. Honestly, if that was me, I would have got totally mad. Like, I would have exploded. Like, if that was me and I don't want to build a temple for God, I'm like, oh no, no. But if I feel like it was David, like, that man was humble. So I feel like he would have felt some type of sense or drawn or weight in his heart because, I mean, it's a temple you're building. God, who wants to admit all this on that? So I really feel like you would have been sad. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, Janelle. Uh, look, if I was David in that situation, I mean, I'd be mad, but I'd still be okay with it because if I don't get it, at least my son will. So, ah. Uh. Do we see that a lot among us, we children? Because some kids get really like super upset if they can't have their way. And that is totally out of line. Like if they can't have their way, then nobody else has to have their way. That is totally wrong, right? If you can't have your way, at least communicate, right? Ask why you, this can happen. And maybe you may, not, you may not have your way today, but you can have your way another time, right? Sometimes we have to learn to accommodate one another. It shouldn't always be about us, right? We have to learn, and we are talking about giving, right? Giving willingly. Sometimes we have to be able to what? Accept things the way it is so that what? We will be able to what? Leave at peace with one another and not even end up getting in trouble. I remember there was a time we were recording and Benedict was sharing with us how he did something and um, his brother did something upsetting to him and um, he was reacting to it. And it even got it, it pretty much escalated the whole thing. Like the whole thing went out of hand. Guess what? He thought, it was his brother that was going to be punished. Guess what? Mm, it was him. How annoying would that be, right? That your brother really wind you up, that you get angry and you are trying to what? Fix your brother and here it go. You go get your brother and now you are rather in trouble. Your brother didn't get in trouble. So sometimes we have to learn to let go of certain things. Because sometimes if you don't, you even put yourself in more trouble, right? Having the attitude of what? Gratitude. Having an attitude of gratitude. So here, David just have to accept it, right? It's Solomon who is doing it. And this is what it is. You need to accept it. God has spoken. Now, what was the leader's attitude towards giving? What was the leader's attitude towards giving? Here, who were the leaders? Who were the leaders? Who were the leaders here? Yes, um, Declan. Well, I don't know who the, the, the leaders who really they are, but then um, I know Esther that- said them when she was reading. I yeah. think what trying to say is like their names, the type of tribe they came from, like every detail. Not really the details. Okay. Remember, we said that David came mm -hmm. in the Israelite. The Israelite also what God, David told his people, the leaders, 
So they didn't mention some of them, their names, but we know they were all Israelites. They were David's people. And if they are David's people, me and David loves God, then it means that they also love God, right? So the, we could say that like, if we come to the church, it's like, okay, the pastor has given, pastor's wife has, also mommy has given. Now presbyters, the elders and the elders and the deaconesses and the deacons has also given. They are the leaders too of the church. You understand that? So these people also gave, why? Because they were following David. Yes, Inshira. Um, you had your hands up. Yeah, the um, leaders um, are Isaac and Israel. Yeah, the Israels. Yeah, the Israelites. Yeah. How did the people respond when they saw the leaders giving willingly? How did the people respond? When they saw their leaders giving willingly, what did they also do? Yes. Joel. They also gave. Come on, they, I'll start they calling also, you. They were really so, happy. They were happy. And they also gave. And they also gave. Giving is contagious. Do you know that? Do you know giving is contagious? If, if, you, if you just try, when you go to church and they are giving, right? And you sit there and people start giving, then you begin to scan through your account. Huh, what do I have that I can also do? What do I have that I can also do? Or you see somebody giving to somebody and you're also standing somewhere. You feel like you also want to give, right? Giving is very contagious. It's a strong anointing that is very contagious. And it is good to be contagious with, with, the, with the spirit of what? Giving, right? We need to give. Why do we have to give? This afternoon, we have learned that what well, it is good to give because what? What we have, God gave it to us. So you giving it all back to God, God will give it back to you. Do we, do we understand? If we give, God will give to us. So anytime you are asked to give, or anytime you give willingly, you are giving what God has given you, you are giving it out. And when you give it out, God will give you more. Let's try it. This Thanksgiving, Christmas too is coming. Let's give out and God will give unto us. Okay? Yes, Benedict. And then I'll come to you. Here's why I can relate with this. So one day, um, I was snagging on some chips, you know, just doing the usual, read my Bible and all that stuff. And that's when Jaden came along. And Jane said, he won my chips. But luckily, this is, called, this is called miracles right here. My grandma was standing right outside the door listening. I'm like, man, you got to be kidding me. So I gave her my chips, and then my grandma called me. I wasn't that good of a mood, but I still went to her. Then she gave me two bags of chips. That's when I came back in the room, and my brother asked, hey, how did you get that? I'm like, um, it's called magic. It's not actually magic, <laughs> but... It's the miracle is that my grandma is standing right there. So, yeah. So it's kind of like a cycle of life. Like you give, then it's all going to, going to come back to you. So always have the attitude of gratitude. When someone's giving in church, don't be that person who just sits there and just looks at everyone. Like, I would give your offering. The parent, when you save your money, like go and help out too. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, do all. I don't know why, but it reminds me of a Bible verse. I forgot where in the Bible, but it said, Acts and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. I think it's in Matthew something. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. I will look it up before we close. And um, my next question on the floor is that I want to ask. When others look at your attitude towards giving, would they be able to see your thankfulness for God's blessing? When others look at your attitude towards giving, would they be able to see your thankfulness for God, for God's blessings? Pretty much to cut it short, 
do you think that if Auntie Nina should sneak to your church or to your house, right? And I'm watching you from afar. Will I see, how will I be able to assess your attitude of giving? Will will be something? Yes, Esther, is it going to be something that I would say, hmm, Esther is a Sunday school kid. I'm really impressed about her. Yes, Esther. Um, like sometimes some people can like kind of they can like kind of tell like they have this bit of talent where they can tell like people's personalities and stuff. But sometimes you can just even anybody can just see that you have the attitude of gratitude and that you give a lot and you're thankful for all those things that people give you. Mm. Yes. God bless you, Esther. Great contribution. Yes. Great answer. Darren and then De um, Declan. I think people will be able to and tell. And Sean, I'm coming to you. I think people will be able to tell like your attitude due to your facial expression. If you've got a blank face, like it means you couldn't care less. Like the money someone gave it to you and says, okay, we'll go and put it in the offering bin. That then you've got a facial expression. It's not like you gain or lose anything. So you couldn't care less. If you've got this joyful look on your face, then some people will be like, then God have done God has done something for you and you are returning the favor. Like they think you are doing a lot, even though you can't do much. But then if you've got this serious, this gloomy expression, actually, but, mm, it means that they are doing this because well, people are looking it like they're doing this for popularity, popularity points or something. You've got a motive for doing it, not because you really want to, but because you kind of sort of have to. Mm. Mm -hmm. God bless I, you. There is like people will be able to tell my expression. Like many people will be able to tell my expression because when I am angry, they can see it. I actually act angry. When I'm sad, I'm sad, and when I'm happy, I'm happy. So they'll be able to tell because of how my, like, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, how my fix looks like, how my acting. Those. So you look at the outer. Then are you so that you can figure the inside, the like the inside parts of your body? God bless you. Yes, we'll go to um Sean. You muted, Sean. Is it working now? Yes, it's working. Okay, so um, I think so. You said um. If you were so, can you repeat the question again? <laughs> so I'm saying that if Sean, if Auntie Nina should come to Dallas right now, right, and you don't know Auntie Nina is there, but I'm watching you from afar, and you are giving to someone, will I be able to? What 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 will be what will be your um, if I'm watching you from afar? I'm expecting that, oh, because you're a Sunday school kid, this is how you need your attitude towards giving should be more positive, right? You, you should give willingly with no grimacing face or, or like, okay, take it or something with attitude or anything. But, um, and also that that is what I'm expecting from you. So I'm saying the question is that if I should just show up in Dallas, will I, and I'm watching from afar, Will your behavior ex um, reflect what I'm thinking about you? Mm, I think yes. I think it's kind of based on the way you act, probably. Mm. God bless you. Yeah, fantastic answer. Yes, James. Um, I would say, yeah, like um, Darren and Declan were saying, it's not hard to read my emotions, you know, you know when I'm mad or when I'm happy, when I'm sad, but one thing that can throw people off is your attitude, right? Because even though they might see your face is so happy and you're giving them something and you're like, here, it, it immediately, like, it, it makes them shocked because part of giving isn't like, you know, giving, but how the you're making the person feel. So if they see you smiling and happy and you're giving them something, they're going to feel happy. But then if you bring them with that bad attitude, then it, they're not going to really, like, feel like they don't know, like, they're not feeling 
if I'm making sense, they're not like really seeing the reason or like why you're giving. Because if you were, had a happy attitude, you were behaving right, then every they would know that you're doing it like from your heart. But then here you are with a bad attitude, like, like you're forced to do it. It really doesn't, you know, do anything for them. So that's also what I wanted to say. I also had a question. So what would you tell... Oh, sorry. No, you can go ahead. Oh, okay. So what would you tell a person who is like the opposite of everything we've discussed? Like, we're teaching people to give from the bottom of their heart, yet here they are being with a bad attitude. Instead of giving, they're always being greedy. They want to keep everything to themselves. How would you, what, what would you tell such a person? You're asking me, we're asking the whole floor, right? Everybody, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So James just asked all of us a question. It doesn't only go for me. Let me start with Sean. Sean has not really spoken. So let's start with Sean. And then we come to Benedict and then Darren. And then Janelle. Yeah, Sean. So I was kind of going to like um, say the kind of like what James said for a second. When he said like, it's like, one thing that throws people off is kind of like your attitude. You like people can actually tell if you're, you know, like you're um, upbeat or you're you just you're just not okay. So if um, so it's kind of like on the way the base. It's kind of like the way you act, the way you do stuff. That's what I think from there. So. Okay. God bless you for your answer. Who else? Benedict. And then we come to them. So the question was, what would you tell such a person who's like the opposite, like always greedy and stuff? And one thing I would say was sometimes my parents usually do to me to get me out of like bad habits, like greediness and all that stuff. Like maybe do the direct opposite, like I was never like a big kid. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I was always greedy. Like I was always wanting stuff. So one thing the parent would always do is force me to give. So whenever you encounter encountering people like that, my mom, when I was in live pop, I'm like, this delicious apple flavor, yummy. I was when he said, okay. Okay, you had your looks. Give it to someone. I'm like, but I'm, I really even scraped off the surface. I'm like, it's not so much goodness, so much yummy goodness. Like, why? Why? And then to give it. That's when I have to get someone. Like, but now when she, now I feel like the gratitude and the attitude, the gratitude, like, I don't even, my mom doesn't even have to come. So usually do, getting people to do the opposite of what they want to do is usually the best way to like put like lower someone's ego. God bless you. Um, great contribution. Um, Darren. Okay, what I would say is that they should read Malachi chapter 3, the verse 11. Because when you read it, it says the Malachi, no, sorry, verse 10, sorry. Malachi 3, the verse 10. And I read, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and mm. pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. That is from the NIV Bible. So if you were to even, no matter how greedy you are, then if you're greedy, actually, you'd actually want more. And by reading this verse, it will give you enough motivation to, to start giving, like be generous, to really mm -hmm. change you in 30 seconds. God bless you. God bless, God bless all of you. Yes, was Esther's hand up or Jewel's hands up? Okay, so, okay, Declan, and then we move on. Our so, final round. Okay, so I wanted to say, say two things. This is our final round. Two things? Okay. 
So the first thing was that I like what Don said was that when you see when the like you give they'll give the Lord just gives it back to you. So if you are greedy and you don't like to give, well you then you continue to run down your money will just keep to run down and run down until you're totally finished unless that you give to most of your things and then the Lord will place it back with new and better things. So and my second thing is what I learned. I learned that when you are given you should get with your heart and not like and do not you should not give like without you should not give with your uh, how do I put this you, you are not happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. God bless you. Precious was at home and here. Our topic for this afternoon has been a thankful heart willingly gives. And our lesson pretty much teaches the generosity and the willingness of David. King David uh, was told by God that Solomon will be his son, will be the one to build the temple of God. But um, Solomon didn't, didn't, wasn't really bought it. I wouldn't use the word actually bought it, but Solomon was not, was not, um, it didn't break his heart so bad, but rather he saw it as an opportunity to tap into that blessing by saying that I'm going to give everything that God has given me. I'm going to put it in the house of God. I'm going to put it in the temple of God. So he gave his jewels, his stones, everything that he had, that God has given him. He gave generously and willingly to um towards the, the building of, of the temple. And not only him, whilst he was doing that, his leaders and the Israel people, they also saw that and they also started what? Doing that as we have learned that giving is contagious. When, when the spirit, when the spirit of giving come, it, it dwells or it comes like in the form of a cloud. Oh, it begins to spread over everybody. Everybody begins to give. So here we, we can see that what? It wasn't only can David that just gave, but his people also, gave, his leaders also gave as well. And we also took the scripture, you can find this story from First uh, Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to 20. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to 20. I have a question here. Why did David praise God? So we are going to use two questions to discuss and bring our lesson to, a, to an end. The first one is, why did David praise God? And then the last question is, what are some of the things that you can give to show your thankfulness to the Lord this week and the weeks to come? One, why did David praise God? Two, what are some of the ways that you think you can show in the form of thankfulness to the Lord this week, next month, and years to come. Yes, the floor is open. We have this will be our last discussion, and then we bring our lesson to an end. Yes, Esther. Um, so we can continue to praise him at church <clears throat> and anywhere beside church. Um, and also we can also like uh, continue to thank him for all as he has done and continue to pray and read the Bible and read more about how um, different Bible characters have been thankful in different Bible times. Amen. Fantastic. God Amen. bless you, Esther. God bless you. Amen. Yes, um, Darren and then Declan. And then Shira, I'm coming to you, okay? What you have learned today. Okay, what, what I'm- Oh, what, Declan has spoken already. So Darren and then we move on. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, I just remember that. Okay, when you say, why did David praise God? I want us to read Psalm 139 verse 14 from the NIV Bible, because that actually answers like exactly. It says, okay. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that mm. full well. He mm. actually said, I praise you because. That means, and that means that God, he, David doesn't just praise God because I want of, you to repeat the verse again so that okay. kids that missed it can. Psalm 139, verse 14. 
from the okay. NIV Bible. I pray in nine verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That means Amen. that David didn't just praise God for because he God has because of what who God is. That is worship. Praising is when you are thanking uh, God for something He's already done for you and stuff and other things like that. That is why David answered that I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. When you read something like that, you understand that that is one of the reasons that we should also praise God. I mean, He created us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I enjoy your contribution. God bless you. Who else? We are wrapping up. Yes, Insha. Um, I learned today that um you should always have gratitude towards the things you have and all always always be thankful for all of your friends and your family. And the second thing I've learned is um is um the story about um David. God bless you. God bless you. We need to be thankful for our family and friends. God richly bless you. Yes, um, Janelle, then James. So what I learned is that uh, you should be thankful and have gratitude for the things that you do have and that you shouldn't wait for you to get like cool stuff before you actually praise the Lord. Okay. God bless you. And also to add to what you said, you know, you always have to say thank you. When somebody do something for you, say thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, James. Um, so what I also learned, what I learned today was that about attitude of gratitude, that you should always have an attitude of gratitude. Um, as Christians, um, even though the world, they celebrate like one day of Thanksgiving for like the entire year, even though every day we're alive and well, every day is a Thanksgiving for us. Mm -hmm. So I've also learned that you have to be thankful. God appreciates a cheerful giver. You must always give from your heart. You must give with like with a good attitude and someone should be appreciative of your giving. So I learned a lot about Thanksgiving and giving and, and being a Christian, how this applies to our, our daily lives today. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you precious ones. We have come to the end of our lesson today. We have learned a lot. We have learned that we need to have in the month of November, we'll be talking about having the attitude of what? Gratitude being thankful of what God has for us. And we even sang the song, count your blessings and name them one by one. If you look at January up to today, the Lord has been good unto us. We are living, we are well, right? You go to school, God has granted you wisdom and knowledge. We need to be thankful to God. We need to be thankful. We need to show some appreciation, right? And whatever we have, Whatever we have, the toys you have, the clothes you have, it is God that blessed mommy, gave to mommy and daddy for you together, right? So if it is God that has given them to you, God is asking you to give them back to him. You can give them back to him by giving it to a friend that needs it. You have four sheds. Your friend have only one. You can run it with mommy and daddy if you can share, if you have to right? Let us be nice. Let's share. Let us share not only to friends and family, to people we don't know too, right? When you're driving and you see those beggars by the roadside, sometimes you can prompt mommy. Mommy, do you have a dollar for us to bless this homeless person? If mommy is led, you will do it. May the Lord bless us all as we celebrate and we are in the month of, 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 of this festive Thanksgiving mood. We want you to ponder upon the blessings of God that you're giving willingly, nobody forcing you to give. And think about those that you want to bless through this Thanksgiving and then Christmas. God bless us all. I will see all of you next week. May the Lord keep us all safe. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
We love you all. Bye. 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 Bye.